Welcome to Freelance Imagineering. What is that exactly? Well, the term Imagineering is often associated with a large and very litigious media conglomerate, but it's a simple combination of the concepts of imagination and engineering. It's harnessing creative ideas and dragging them kicking and screaming into reality. This term appeared at least as early as the 1940s, used by aluminum company Alcoa in some brand awareness advertisements during World War II. For me, it's a combination of design, engineering, and project planning that brings something from my brain into reality, matching as closely as I can. But these things tend to be pretty weird, and the audience for them is often too small for me to make a living at it. So, I gotta do it freelance. This is the first of what I hope will be many videos detailing various projects that I've done. This one is about a very simple project, and because of that, I'll be talking more about the story behind it than the project itself. Why? Because this video is celebrating the 20th anniversary of this project. It was the first real hardware mod that I did, and when it went well, it gave me the confidence to embark on a journey through a whole bunch of other projects over the following 20 years. So, we'll set the Wayback Machine for the year 2002. I learned I could change the red LED in my computer mouse to a blue LED. Believe it or not, this was a cutting-edge hardware mod at the time. Why do this project at all? As a lifelong fan of things that glow blue, this was a no-brainer. I had a cheap optical mouse that I was willing to ruin in the process, and there was a place called Radio Shack where I could actually walk up and buy a blue LED, which was still pretty uncommon at the time. I've gone through and collected up the artifacts I have for each project, and I hope to use those to tell the story of the build process in each of these videos. For this project, yeah, this is all the documentation I have. It was red though, I promise. Since I can't really show you any more detail of the actual build process, what I can do is talk more about why that is, the context around why this project happened and why it mattered to me, and kind of finish off with a where is this project now. As for the scarcity and quality of these photos, well, digital cameras were still fairly new back then. These photos were actually taken in still mode on this exact digital video camera, and the quality was incredibly rough. This is the actual memory card I used when taking these photos. You may be thinking, hey, that looks a lot like an SD card, but it says multimedia card and they misspelled gigabytes. On a technical level, it basically is an SD card that's missing the lock switch and has extremely 90s branding. They also had a very small capacity. This actually is four megabytes. This one picture of the memory card would take up more than half its space. And this is why there's just not much for me to show here. The images were lousy, and you only got a couple of them before having to empty the card, so I just didn't really bother. At the time, I had no idea that this project would end up being significant to me. Earlier, I said this project was the first thing that gave me the confidence to try more of this kind of thing. In a way, I have to thank basic cable television. Back in 2002, I watched a lot of a cable TV channel called Tech TV. Bear in mind, this was before podcasting. It was kind of novel having internet culture on TV, before that became the worst thing imaginable. There was a show I watched all the time called The Screen Savers, which had segments featuring Yoshi, aka Josh de Herrera. These segments were such a hit, they actually made a book out of them. This is my copy. On one of these segments, Yoshi did a modified version of a project from Metku Mods called the Fire Wheel, essentially making a translucent scroll wheel replacement and installing a red LED in a ball mouse. In Yoshi's version, called Project Iris, he used an optical mouse that already had a red LED, and in addition to making the translucent scroll wheel, swapped the red LED for a blue one. I actually didn't want to bother with changing the scroll wheel, but changing my optical mouse to have a blue LED sounded like a simpler goal, and I didn't mind if I destroyed the mouse and my fancy new blue LED in the process. It was a well-defined and manageable risk, with a payoff I'd seen on TV, so I actually became willing to try it. And it worked! Here it is, still working, 20 years later. Through the magic of multiple dongles, I can even hook it up to a modern device, and voila! Mousing! Glowing blue! The plastic this mouse was made of has not fared so well over 20 years, but maybe in a future video I'll make a run at doing a retro-bright process on it. 
So, what did I learn from this? Why was it satisfying enough to get me to take on more projects and eventually make a whole video to celebrate its 20th anniversary? I'm not kidding when I say the most important thing I learned was just to be really willing to fail when trying something new. To set up an environment where the project requires you to step out of your comfort zone. But if it goes badly, it's not the end of the world. That has absolutely changed my life. And many people I know still struggle with this. I also learned that I could modify an existing thing instead of starting from scratch, like I'd been doing with customizing ramen for dinner. Starting from a blank slate is very tough, especially when you're just building up some skills. And I think it makes people give up on things that may end up altering the course of their lives. So, what's next from here? Well, future videos will be a mixture of retrospectives like this one, and how-tos with more detailed build process explanations of my current projects. But I just had to give this one its due. Speaking of, I can't thank Josh De Herrera enough for being one of the major reasons I dove into this kind of thing. And my greatest hope is that these videos can serve that same purpose for others. If you take nothing else from this video, it should be this. Get out there and make something. You might find yourself telling people about it 20 years from now. Till next time, thanks for watching.